What's up, Candy Boys? Nick here. Figured I'd try to do an update video of my progression with AI upscaling. In this video, I intend to show a clip ripped directly from a DVD. Turn that 480 interlaced or progressive scan video into hopefully a high quality 1080p or maybe even 4K video. So let's get started. As you can see on my desktop, I have a prearranged clip. It's about a minute taken directly from the DVD. As I mentioned in a previous video, I'll be using Handbrake to upscale that up to 1080p 60 frames per second. And this will be in an effort to smooth out any of those interlacing lines that might be present from the DVD rip and I hope provide a more complete picture for upscaling based on the individual pixel sizes. The program itself seems to do a lot better in my experience with a direct 1080p to 1080p picture. Even if that initial 1080p picture was just a ballooned 480p or 480i DVD rip based on pixel size and what it's able to render from the lack of sharpness. So I have my minute long clip taken directly from a DVD. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into Handbrake. Super high quality, doesn't really affect much. Uh, am I, you won't be able to tell the difference between any of these if you do this in the way that I'm doing it. But dimensions allow upscaling. I'm a big fan of 60 frames per second, constant, and then constant quality, bringing that down to something like five. I'm not going to change any other system parameters from that, but I will go ahead and start the encode. And we're gonna go ahead and fast forward through most of this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it back on my desktop next to the other clip. I'll be sure not to get them confused. Then we can jump straight into the Topaz Video AI upscaling. One thing to remember before you start anything, or one thing to check rather, is going into your preferences. As you can see within this machine I'm using currently, I have an RTX 3060. I selected my memory usage, how many max processes I can have. Uh, you can run simultaneous encodes with multiple GPUs, and this is what gives you that option. I mentioned that I have the ART A770. There are some issues with the upscaling program and the ART GPUs in the moment. The Topaz team is working pretty feverishly to get those features up and running not quite identified whether that's an Intel issue, a Topaz issue, compatibility, or something between the implementation of new drivers and just how compatible the, the Arc GPU has been. But prior to some updates, uh, I was able to use the Arc GPU for upscaling and it worked phenomenal, like twice the speed of the 3060, which the 3060 is no slouch when it comes to upscaling in those tensor cores, but for the Arc GPU and whatever paralleling technology it has with its AI features is able to vastly outpace that uh, up to like, you know, 4080 levels almost. So for right now, for stability purposes, I'm selecting the 3060, even though it will be slower. But as I mentioned, I want to actually, it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't finish. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my minute long clip that we just upscaled into the upscaling program. You can see here, now comes in our feature. You can see it's original because we upscaled it to 1080p, 60 frames per second, that's what registers. We're gonna leave that alone for now. The issue being that this is not, while good, is not as good as it could be. And you'll begin to see that as the upscaling kind of takes hold and I can preview that for you. So to kind of run through these, unless you're running with like home videos, the motion deblur, stabilization, um, those aren't the most important settings to mess around with right now for simplicity's sake. Home movies, especially if you're converting something from VHS or some sort of analog, um, these might come in handy, but for our purposes right now, we're gonna focus primarily on enhancement. Frame interpolation is, in my experience, only useful if you're changing the frames per second. So if you had typical 24, 23.976 is pretty standard for most television. If I wasn't using Handbrake to automatically fill in the gaps up to 60 frames per second, you could use this feature to take it straight from 24 frames per second to 60 frames per second if you like that aesthetic like I do. Uh, for a smoother image and I but I've had varying results 
in that, especially when it comes to old television programs. Sometimes it looks great, other times it's it's real wonky. So I tend to just smooth it out with handbrake and just focus entirely on image quality from what it can extrapolate from there. Uh, so that with that being said, that's why I focus primarily on enhancement. Straight to Artemis and medium quality. You can see, I'll put it on the NVIDIA encoder. I want to keep it MP4 because that's a personal preference. And we'll just get a taste of what that looks like with a little preview here. So as you're going to see, the blurriness on the left versus some of the sharpness that's been smoothed out on the right. Just the beginning stages. If I zoom in a little bit, you can really see it's a pretty drastic, just with that one setting change, difference. Look at the face and the detailing. Uh, the scarring on his face. And the lines in the background. Just really great initial improvements just from doing this. Especially if you're if you consider since this t television series, Star Trek Voyager, doesn't have an official upscaled release. Even just taking it from this, watching it from your DVD into something like, and running the episodes through this Artemis layer just drastically improves image quality. There is a little bit, you can kind of see within the eyes, relative. So here's the original. It does, I do think that that's a slight improvement, even if it doesn't look completely natural, especially if you're at a distance. It's really when you start to zoom in, you start to see how off it can be relative to not upscaled. But I still think this looks great. If we go ahead and export the, you can get in a sense of how long this is going to take. This is about a minute long. I'll click export. One minute long clip, 1080p to 1080p, not changing frames per second. It takes about seven, eight minutes. So uh, that's not bad. As I mentioned before, the Arc GPU, when it was working, a clip like this would maybe take three minutes most, um, especially if you up the power limit. Side note, when you select export, it just saves directly to wherever that source file was saved to. There is a capability to save it elsewhere. You can see export as, and then you can select the folder you wish to export to. You can kind of see here, a little bit more zoomed in. Your typical viewing window, if you're watching this on the computer especially, what I think is a very night and day difference. Just the out, like, very much more pronounced lines. The hair has a lot more detail. It's not as fuzzy. You can see the detailing in the face and the eyes. While it doesn't look 100% natural, completely different. The first phase of your therapy is complete. How do you feel? You can't deny your people sent the probe. They made an error in judgment. They failed to anticipate the consequences of their actions. Doesn't seem fair, does it? My daughter, she'll have food, medical care, everything she needs. Anyway, so we've gone that far. Let's go ahead and take our upscaled clip. I'm going to go ahead and drag it back in. Let's see what happens if we attempt to enhance it with one of the better... I think this is pretty unanimous that Proteus, from an upscaling perspective, is a much more flexible and just produces better results, uh, by and large. The problem with Proteus is the auto feature, or estimating in manual, you can see here if you go to manual and estimate, it will analyze its best guess. I'm going to run this through just so we can get an idea of what it would look like just from the estimating, but I don't expect it to look all that great. Um, I'll try it on the non-upscaled clip and the upscaled clip just to get a sense here. The first phase of your therapy is complete. How do you feel? Able to treat everyone. Unfortunately, Mr. Varen has refused our help. Did you expect him to cooperate? We His have. behavior? No. But that doesn't mean that we are responsible for what's happened here. You can't deny your people sent the probe. They made an error in judgment. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and check out the auto parameters for the Proteus AI model. 
Uh, we just took a look at the manual estimated out. You can see in here if we go to manual for the raw footage estimate, it'll give its best approximation for what it, the program believes will give us the best chance for upscaling. Now, what happens if we just take it to auto? Is that the same? Does the same thing happen? Or does it net better results? Does it net worse results? This is the one thing that I want to kind of uh, narrow in on in a comparative basis. So we'll do one for raw and then one for the Artemis upscale in addition to the Proteus Auto. And then I'll go ahead and throw up on the screen the comparison between the Proteus Auto and the Proteus Manual with estimated uh, parameters. The first phase of your therapy is complete. How do Aaron you feel? has refused our help. Did you expect him to cooperate? His behavior is irrational. To you, Deny maybe. your people sent the probe. They made an error in judgment. They failed to anticipate the consequences of their actions. But they never meant to destroy your... Hopefully this provided some sort of insight into how this program works and kind of the different options you can run through and play with uh, in your trial and error efforts to see what works best for the video that you're trying to upscale. As mentioned before, this is looking in particular at a DVD rip of a 90s show running at 24 frames per second initially at 480i. So we've been able to take it from interlaced to progressive scan 480p to now 1080p 60 frames per second and then whatever detail we can extrapolate from that to make it better than the original. I don't guarantee that it will be close to something like Blu-ray quality and I don't even want to imagine the type of distortion that'll happen and maybe I'll touch on that on a later video to get into 4k but at least within these simplified first passes of trying to take a ballooned up 1080p video file from handbrake and adding additional detail through these upscaling features i think does add something to the watchability and the immersiveness of, of the particular episode as I mentioned before there is no official upscaled version of this and i think a lot of that has to do with just return on investment from the next generation and the original series that paramount and netflix pioneered within the upscaling efforts but if we ever do get a Voyager, a Deep Space Nine Blu-ray release, that would be ideal. But for now, this is the best option we've got <laughs> um, in that all I have right now is a library of DVDs from seasons one through seven. And I wish that they looked better on, on my 4K television. So uh, hopefully this gets us a step closer. Thanks again.